Good afternoon, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome to the fourth and final episode of our Draconic Evolution uh, tutorial series. So this episode, we're going to be covering the, honestly, I think the best aspect of Draconic Evolution, um, which is the reactor and the uh, energy transfer um, within the mod. So I've already set one up here, I've been playing with it, um, which we'll cover um, that in a minute. But we will set up our own to start with. Um, so to set up the reactor, and we're going to cover the energy relays um, here in a second. And that's how we're going to actually um, use the reactor is through the energy relays. Um, but to get started, the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need to get yourself a draconic reactor core, which does take chaos shards. Um, so this is very late game. Um, you're also going to need at least four reactor stabilizers, which take uh, those chaotic cores that take chaos shards. Um, the reactor stabilizer frames aren't terrible. The um, focus also isn't bad. And uh, then the stabilizer rotor isn't all that bad either. Um, main thing is that chaotic core and then the draconic reactor core, both of those are fairly expensive due to the chaos shards. And then you're also going to need one reactor energy acceptor, which this is fairly cheap um, to craft. <clears throat> and when you set up your reactor, you can either set it up um, horizontally or vertically. So, you know, right here I've got one that's laid out horizontally. Um, over here, just for the sake of doing it, we will set one up um, vertically, just so you guys can see um, the difference. So, um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set your, let me grab some cobble or glass or something. Um, let's go one, two, three, four, and we'll put our draconic reactor core uh, down. And personally, I suggest, you know, you can put these uh, reactor stabilizers um, two blocks minimum um, away from the reactor core. I suggest more around like four um, that way you give it enough space so that you can load um, the maximum amount of awakened draconium into it, um, which would be eight blocks at a time. So we'll go ahead and let me actually do that. A little bit easier to set it. We'll put that. You want these rings facing in towards the reactor core. Um, so we've got four blocks, and you're going to want to do the same distance all the way around and there whoops why you oh that's right I need to put it in from this direction um, that and then one more And there we go. So we have our four stabilizers. And then you're going to want to do the same thing with your reactor energy uh, injector. And you can put it on either one of these sides. It really doesn't matter. Um, we're going to go off over here and set it up right there, keeping the same distance um, between this. So now if we right click on this stabilizer, um, you'll notice it doesn't open up a GUI. That's because there's an issue um, whenever you do this, if you have blocks in between the stabilizer and the draconic reactor core, um, it's going to act up when you finish setting everything. So just put your reactor core down or save that for last, um, you know, placing that down last. So now if we right click here, um, you'll notice that we get this little GUI here, draconic reactor status says offline. Um, so make sure it says that. Sometimes it'll say um, not a valid, um, oh, not a valid setup or something like that. If it does that um, and you've set it all up correctly, like the same distance uh, for the stabilizers and the injectors and everything, just remove your uh, reactor core and replace it and make sure that there are no blocks between your stabilizers and stuff and the core. Um, so we get this little GUI here. 
and you can click down here and show your stats of course right now it's not running so there's nothing here um, the GUI the core temperature as this goes up you're going to produce more RF per tick so if we jump over here um, this design is about the most efficient design that you can build um, and it produces about 537,000 RF a tick. Um, so you got your core temperature, um, ideally you want it around 8,000. Um, if you go up here to the red, um, that's actually going to cause your containment field to require more energy, um, quite a bit more energy and eventually it's just going to uh, malfunction and explode and at the end of the episode I will show you an explosion so you guys can see it it is <laughs> a bit intense to say the least um, so make sure your core temperature if you want the maximum RF output try to keep it around 8,000 don't go uh, you know above that um, by much you can run it safely I think the most I've ever ran it at is about 8,027 um, just when it's balancing out and that's fairly okay just don't get it up here in the red um, the containment field strength, as long as you have this above the red, that's fine. Basically, the more RF that you input into the stabilizer, the more uh, containment field strength that you're going to get. But um, generally, just try to keep it just right here above the red, and that's pretty safe. Um, you're not going to have any issues right in there. Um, the energy saturation level is the amount of energy that is stored within the core, and um, you ideally you want to keep this down low however if you want a more efficient design um, running the energy saturation higher up you can um, basically double nearly double the amount of RF that a single piece of awakened draconium is going to give you so if you want more energy total but don't want the burst energy um, you can run a higher saturation <clears throat> and then the last uh, bar here is your fuel conversion level. So eight blocks of awakened draconium is going to give you 10,368 of this fuel. And it will run an extremely long time. Even with this, this is, um, you know, the most, about the most energy output that you're going to get. However, even then, um, when it's consuming fuel at a, at a fairly rapid rate uh, compared to the higher... Um, efficiency higher saturation levels uh, design even then it's going to run those eight blocks of uh, awakened draconium for quite a while I've had this running for uh, probably about 30 40 minutes or something and it's only ran 21 out of those 10,368 um, and you know it's been filling up this so we've got about 40 billion RF in this energy core now um, and I've got these here. Uh, the design I'm going to show you over there, you aren't going to require these. Just the way I laid this out, um, I kind of need them on there. Um, but anyway, let's now that we've explained the GUI there, uh, let's go ahead and we will activate this. So what you're going to do is just come over here to your reactor stabilizer. And you're going to take your awakened draconium. And like I said, you can put up to eight blocks in this at a time. Now, if you put your stabilizers in closer, um, I believe it's more like four blocks at a time. But if you um, at least give them a few blocks space, you're going to be able to put the um, full eight blocks in there, which is the maximum. Um, but you can place these stabilizers all the way out to, I believe, ten blocks away from the core um, in order, um, you know, to keep it working and everything. You can move them out that far. So now that we've got that fuel in there, you'll notice that the uh, little image here changed and we've actually got some core mass, which this is pretty much going to stay the same. If you put eight blocks in there, you're going to have eight mass. Um, if you put six blocks in there, you're going to have six mass. Um, and even as the reactor runs, it's going to convert some of this awakened draconium into chaos, but it's still going to keep the same mass. So that's pretty much going to be um, just set. Uh, based on how much fuel you insert in there and if you want to take your fuel back out you can click here on extract fuel however you will note that once you start running this you cannot add or remove fuel until it is completed so if we come over to this one um, we can initiate a shutdown um, but while this is running we're not going to be able to add or remove any fuel to it 
and ideally unless you just really need to I wouldn't suggest running a shutdown because it does take um, a charge up time you, that you'll see as well as um, after it charges up then you can activate it and it does take a startup time as well to really get everything balanced um, just like uh, with big reactors or something so now that we've got that set we can't just activate this because <coughs> um, the way that the draconic reactor works is it's going to have to have some power um, this energy injector is going to have to have power to uh, run the containment field and it's going to require energy constantly um, to do that so in order to set these up you are going to have to have a decent power infrastructure before you get started um, because generally this thing um, you know when the containment field is low it's going to be running about a hundred thousand RF a tick um, I usually run at maximum about 222 RF or 20, 222,000 RF a tick um, through this thing um, once the temperature's up. If we look over here, um, I can show you how much this one is running. Um, it's uh, the field, this uh, stabilizer is pulling in 164,000 RF a tick. Um, to keep it stabilized. However, it is uh, generating 537,000 um, RF a tick. So, um, you know, it kind of it kind of balances itself out, and you still come out with a ton of power um, in the long run. So, what we're going to do to um, get energy to this is we're actually going to use our um, energy core here. So, let's get ourselves. Uh, energy pylons and let's just set one up let me grab an angel block actually that would probably make life a little bit easier all right we'll just set one up like right here I guess and that and we'll set this to pull in energy and then uh, we'll start touching on the energy relay system that's added. We'll cover it a little bit more at the end of the episode, but we'll cover some of the basics right now. So, um, basically we'll cover everything but the wireless transceiver. So Draconic Evolution has its own energy transfer system. It is extremely powerful, and if you notice, that's one of uh, the setups for it. And it looks amazing, I think. Um, at least in my opinion. Now when you make it there is basic ones like these energy relays um, that you can craft with just draconic cores, industrial diamonds, and draconium ingots. So fairly cheap. That makes four of them. Um, you know it doesn't actually require any uh, wither nether stars, sorry, um, or anything like that. So you could set this up early on. The energy transceivers just require an energy relay to get two of those. And then the wireless energy um, does require a little bit more. It requires that particle generator, some ender pearls, and some eyes of ender um, to craft one of those. The advanced ones, however, do require a wyvern core, four draconic cores, and then energy relays to get four of those. And then um, the rest of this is pretty much the same stuff. So, but um, just for this demonstration, I'm just going to be using the advanced. They work the exact same way. However, um, there is, um, like if we look at the energy relay here, it has a limited range of 25 blocks with max connection set at 10. The advanced one has 50 blocks and 20 connections. So it's just a little bit more powerful um, of a transfer system. So to actually import or export um, energy, you're going to require one of these energy transceivers. And then you're also going to want to make yourself a crystal binder, which is just a blaze rod, draconic core, diamond, and draconium. And you can shift right click to change the function mode, similar to like the Batania wand or, you know, um, any kind of uh, multifunction type wrenches. Um, so to actually use this, we're going to set it to bind. And then we're going to come out, and honestly, since we're using um, this, we could just connect another one here because we have a 50 block range with this and then we could just right click here it'll say position saved come up to the other one 
right click that and you're going to see a link there. Now what you're going to want to do is shift right click this and set it to mode change and we're going to right click this so up at the top right or at the top left we're going to change it to input and we can go ahead and do five times transfer um, if you want like a slower input you can just set it at the standard input but I tend to put it at five times transfer um, unless I'm wanting to limit the amount of power um, however I actually believe yeah I drained a bit of power <coughs> um, when you're plugging into this energy injector you want to be careful because this thing can absorb um, infinite amount of power so uh, you kind of want to limit how much that it can intake because if you don't um, it is going to just absorb everything so what we're going to do here is we are going to set up a little system here to limit the amount of power um, which draconic evolution adds a really nice block called this flux gate um, that its sole purpose is limiting um, the amount of power that moves through it. So what we're going to do here is we are going to set up a comparator and then we can um, actually right click, shift right click this reactor energy injector and you can see that we're changing a comparator mode. So the best comparator mode to set up for um, limiting the amount of RF that moves through this is set it to containment field inverted that way it's going to emit a redstone signal of 15 um, when it has no containment field but as the containment field rises and as the need for power drops um, it's going to lessen that redstone output that, uh, that it sends out and then uh, <clears throat> what you'll want to do is put your block of redstone there and then go ahead and add a comparator um, because you want to uh, send out the maximum uh, you know you don't want your redstone level to drop as it moves and then we're just going to put another piece of redstone there and no actually I was setting it up uh, for the horizontal design so let's actually set it up here and that and let's see thinking okay yeah we'll we'll leave it at that and uh, all right there and hmm I'm just thinking sorry um <coughs> Let's see, let's place this. These are kind of awkward to place at times because um, basically you're going to have two sides here. You're going to have this purple side and then this orange side. The orange side is going to be your output and the purple side is going to be your input. So we're going to set it up right there and let me actually, uh, let's see. Sorry, since we're, we're laying it out this way, we have to kind of change it up. Plus, we're going to use the uh, crystals, so those work a little bit different. Um, wonder. Okay, give me one second. Let me figure out the best uh, way to route this. Okay, welcome back. Um, now, granted, if you're using um, pipes instead of the crystals it's a little bit more lenient because you can you know you run the pipe out through there um, so I've actually whoops, I've actually got it set up just like this here um, and also if you wanted to you could use like a red uh, a red alloy wire or something and it would be a little bit easier set up but I was just kinda wanting to show you a wanting to show you a um, if you just use the vanilla redstone setup um, you know you could do it like this 
so because I'm trying to go as close as I can to like pure draconic evolution with this uh, this build so basically this this way we've got our redstone level of 15 running around connecting into here so this is getting a redstone signal of um, 15 right now and what we're gonna do is we're going to adjust this I don't know it's uh, shift and control right yeah and we're gonna uh, raise this redstone signal high input up to about 222,000 so that way if it's getting a redstone signal of 15 this flu uh, flux flow control gate is going to allow 222,000 RF a tick to move through this into um, the reactor energy injector. Um, however, if you didn't use the flux gate, it's just going to take all the power into here, and you're really not going to get any kind of, um, you know, added energy um, output from your reactor because this thing's just going to eat everything up. And then what we can do is we can just put another advanced energy transceiver on here and let's go ahead and set it to output and we'll go ahead and do five times transfer and set this to bind mode and let's bind these two together so now <coughs> you'll notice that this turns um, if we don't have any item on there's no connection here However, when energy is moving through this, you're going to see like this like lightsaber effect um, that goes through there, and that means energy is being transferred through this line. But right now, there's no energy transfer, so we can't even see the line unless we have the crystal binder out, um, which will allow us to see. So um, keep in mind, this is um, input because it's being inputted um, or being input into the energy um, network and this is output because it's outputting out of the energy network. Um, so now we've actually got power uh, moving into this so we can activate this now if we want. So what we'll do is we'll hit charge reactor and you'll notice that this is starting to get power and it's kind of added this like uh, almost purplish tint around it and it's starting to change colors that means it's charging up. So while it's charging up you're gonna see this containment field build up to 50% after which you're going to see the energy saturation start to rise and then after that the core temperature is going to start rising and um, it does take a little while for it to um, you know get charged up and everything and during that time it is going to be drawing a bit of power um, not a ton but a decent little amount we can actually look in here I believe no Okay, not yet, I guess. Um, oops. Okay, everything's still going good. It's kind of worried there for a second. Um, so we're going to let that charge for just a little bit while we cover um, the rest of the Draconic Evolution um, network stuff. So um, we've covered how to get energy out of... Um, you know items and this by the way this um, energy transceiver will work on any kind of block that um, emits energy so if we oops, let's change this to mode change um, you'll notice that the input it's actually inputting energy from the creative energy cell another thing to note is that instead of just moving power um, basically what it does is it's going to balance the amount of power so over here um, you see this has nine hundred or nine million eight hundred eighty one thousand six hundred um, RF in it and this one has nine million six hundred uh, yeah six hundred nineteen thousand seven hundred and sixty RF so what it's doing is it's trying to balance out the RF in this network um, between the two and um, so this one is getting the RF drained out of it, so it's sending more over here trying to balance that out. And the, the bigger the difference between um, this one and that one, um, the larger the difference, the faster the transfer. So it's going to work harder to try to balance out that energy um, based on 
um, the amount of energy being used over there. <coughs> um, so we've got some power here and what we can do if we don't want to just straight up connect um, you know two of these transceivers together um, we can use these relays so basically we can run this out to over here and they actually have a kind of a neat little graphic too I actually love the um, you know this this mod is just beautiful graphically I think um, but we can connect these relays together the same way we connected those transceivers and you'll notice this sent energy over there really really quick and it's kind of balancing out here um, uh, with this one I believe this has a limit of like half a million or something like that or uh, five million um, I believe is their limit but if you notice it's kind of fluctuating and it's kind of slowing down the transfer that's because it's getting closer to being balanced out with that one so the energy relays are basically a way to um, you know send your wiring um, a long distance and then what we could do is we could run say another relay here and connect that and so on and you'll notice here on the GUI up there it says connections so these can have 20 connections the uh, standard ones can have 10 so um, I could add another relay say right here and have some energy coming off of that however these um, energy relays cannot connect to blocks so if I had um, let me get like an example here if I had say an energy infuser these don't stack do they okay and I had that set up right here you'll notice it's not going to get any kind of energy from that um, but then what we would do if we wanted to get the energy is we could say set up our energy infuser right here and add a uh, transceiver and bind this to that and now you'll notice that it filled up with energy um, because those transceivers are your way that, to connect to uh, like your machines and different blocks that accept power now there's also another way to um, set up power to machines so say I had a bunch of infusers right here I could use this wireless transceiver and you'll notice it has a little bit different graphic also very cool I love this mod um, just for the record so we will bind this to this and you'll notice that this is starting to get some power um, but of course these aren't getting power at the moment but what we can do is we can bind this to that and if you notice this can have up to six connections and whoops, we'll bind that we'll bind that we'll bind that and so this can wirelessly connect to all of these blocks and you'll notice we can see the energy is moving between this wireless transfer um, to these machines with this little graphic and it's going to stop here in just a second there we go means these machines are now filled with power and like I said this can have um, up to six connections from the energy network um, and then it can have up to 16 wireless connections so if I wanted to I could have um, you know <laughs> 16 uh, infusers or whatever you know kind of machine and I could link this to all of these machines um, just to this one block and then I could also have this one block connected to six other nodes within the energy network um, so then I could um, you know bring another energy relay out here and bind that to that and be moving power um, down through that line so if you I'm sure you can you can tell that um, if you were to set this network up it would be extremely powerful um, for energy transfer around your base because all of these have multiple connections and they're fairly cheap because you know I can span long distances with just one block and um, you know when we were looking at these uh, these standard ones uh, these are not expensive at all and um, those can traverse 25 blocks so even fairly mid game um, early to mid game really you could have a very powerful um, power network with those energy relays and the nice thing is if you were to make a bunch of those and you wanted to upgrade your system they're used in the crafting of the advanced ones so um, there's really no loss there either 
So anyway, our reactor should be charged up and um, you'll notice the containment field went up to 50%, the core temperature went up to 2000, and the energy saturation went up to 50%. So now that that's done, it's, it's not doing anything at this point, so what we can do is we can hit activate um, to start this running. However, um, at the moment we have no way to tran we have no um, setup for transferring the energy out of this that we wanna use. So what we're gonna do is we're going to add we're going to put down another flux gate here and by the way you can use the crystal binder um, let's see mo uh, set it to mode change and then if you go around here actually I don't know that it okay yeah it does have to be set on mode change um, and that's how you can rotate your block <coughs> so this time we're gonna set the purple side to the reactor stabilizer because all of these for reactor stabilizers um, function as your energy output. So any, any energy that you need to move out of this um, can be removed through the back of the reactor stabilizer and you'll see there's a little output there on the back. So we're going to set the purple side of the flux gate to the reactor stabilizer so it's inputting and then the output um, facing out. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this up so that um, redstone signal high we'll just leave it because we're not going to set up a redstone um, setup for this uh, flux gate but what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to um, move this up and by the way you can scroll this too if you want to um, a little bit quicker but we're going to set this to oops, 537,000 RF a tick because if you recall that um, the design that we're using produces 537 a little bit more but um, that'll be all right um, so we'll set it to 537,000 and we'll go ahead and put one of our advanced energy transceivers down here and then we'll just come up here and set up another one of these energy pylons right there get our glass and let's go ahead and right click that so it's outputting um, to the energy block multi block and we're going to set that up and let's go ahead oops and set it to mode change we're going to set this to output five times transfer this one to input five times transfer and then we're just going to bind these two together so now um, energy will be moving through this system so now that that's set up let's hit activate and you'll see that the reactor starts to kick on um, it is going to take a while for the core temperature to rise and everything to balance out like it is on that um, reactor over there but if you notice this is a vertical design <coughs> so um, so yeah that's uh, the vertical and then the horizontal um, but like I said you're not going to be able to add uh, fuel so basically you're gonna normally what you'll do is you'll just let this run until it runs out of fuel that way it safely shuts itself down and um, then you can add more fuel in. However, uh, you need to be really, really careful around these things because like I said before, um, these things do explode and they explode very, very violently. So I feel like we've covered how to set up a reactor, um, how to configure it. Um, we covered the energy transfer and everything. So now it's time for us to show you what not to do. So we've got this reactor over here running and um, you know there's still fuel in there and everything one thing that you don't want to do is um, you don't want to for example route your power around your flux gates um, also you wouldn't want to um, break any reactor stabilizers or um, the reactor energy injector you want to make sure that this thing keeps uh, power in it so there's multiple ways that you can go wrong with this. The way that I'm going to show you is actually a common mistake, I think. Um, people don't put down the flux gates to uh, limit how much power is being pulled out of this. So what will happen is the saturation 
will drop out of this, the temperature is going to go up, and then of course the containment field is going to lose stability and it's going to implode. <laughs> so let's take a look at that. Uh, we're just going to set this up to bind. So basically it's going to start pulling all the power out of there. And why well, you know... Oh, I'm feeding. Let me change the um, mode change. There we go. So now we'll see that the energy saturation is starting to drop um, fairly rapidly. The temperature is starting to go up. And here in just a second, and it really doesn't, it does not take long. So if you mess up and break something, you'll notice the temperature is starting to rise and boom. And of course we died. <laughs> we were vaporized by a high energy uh, fusion explosion. And this will kind of like lag you out a little bit. Um, you'll notice my game's running like crap right now um, because depending on how much draconium is um, in the system when it explodes affects how big the blast radius is. And you'll notice that it randomly creates blocks of lava as well during the um, explosion. Uh, if we come over here, <laughs> we've got some blocks that are just safe. Um, these are all blasts.